Welcome to a demonstration of my adaptation of the ring modulator, aka balance modulator circuit from the Buchla Music Easel. This is Aaron Lannerman behind the camera. The ring mod circuit actually consists of four vactrals. I've never seen anything else like it. It takes the input signal, inverts it, so it has the original and inverted signal, which it crossfades, basically mixes between those using two vactrals. And then there's a second two vectorals that are used in a feedback loop that are basically used to linearize the response of this. So it's a unique circuit. A little bit later we'll look at the um, crossfader it has built into it that uses another couple of vectorals. And there's a whole external secondary VCA you can use that um, uses another vectoral. So right now we are sending in a saw tooth wave coming from a MOTM 310. The sine wave that's being used to modulate it is coming from an MOTM 300 and let's crank the whoops let's crank the sine wave so typical ring modi sound so let's take that there and Let's now change the frequency of the signal. Let's listen to it with the pulse wave. So here's a pulse wave, same deal. Changing the modulation again. Of course I can also do crazy things like modulate it with a something like a sawtooth wave instead. So here's a saw modulated with a saw, or actually it's a pulse modulated with a saw. Here's a saw modulated with a saw. Let's do pulse modulated with a pulse. Let's change that pulse width around. So typical ring mod craziness. Let's go back to kind of a more standard ring mod mode. Let's do a saw modulated with a sign. Okay. So going back over here, another thing we can, that's the raw ring modulated output. We can also, um, just a second, let me turn this down before I go crazy. Um, we can also take the output here, again, as in the other video, I'm apologizing for the Blair Witch style uh, camera work, and attach this to the Let's see, where did my mixer output go? So here's the mixer. Um, we can use this in a couple different modes. The, this is a crossfade circuit that in its original mode and the way I've got it, notice I've got a couple wires just tied together now. That's kind of a, a quick switch. It gives you the option between crossfading the, between the original signal, these will cause that having a low index, and the full ring mod signal, which the easel calls having a high index. So if I can find the, um, let's see, the fader mixer control. Uh, let's see, I've got too many knobs here. Let's see which one's this one. I think it's this one, no, this one. So when I have it turned all the way to one extreme, you hear the original signal. When I turn it to the other, it's the pure ring mod signal. And of course, it can mix back and forth. And of course, that doesn't get fun until we put in some sort of voltage control. So I grab the purple wire and plug it into the control voltage input here. One more input here. I'm going to sort of set the offset control in the middle and then turn in the amount of the control voltage that's going in. So here you see it fading back and forth, and I can control how much based on a sine wave coming in a MOTM 390 LFO. Let me crank the rate, lower the rate. To do things like put in a square wave. 
and so on. So that lets you fade between the two of those. Another thing that we have here, let me turn that down, is there is an entirely separate um, VCA type vectoral circuit that the crossfader also controls. On the easel that's used to change the gain on uh, FM signal for the oscillators. Again, as I think I mentioned in the other video, it's probably going to be a long time before I ever do those, if I ever do the easel oscillators at all. So here I've just set it up as an external VCA. That's just a totally separate thing that you can use. So to make that uh, interesting, well, first let me, um, let's see, I want to actually now then take the speaker and plug it into that VCA output. Let's see, the VCA output uh, is this guy here. Um, can't wait until I actually get some control panels made for these things. Let's see, I'm going to plug that in there and turn this back up. And to make that interesting, so that's the modulation input. Let me put something more dramatic in like the saw. So now that I've got the sawtooth wave going through, I can turn it down with the offset control or turn it back up. And of course with an external control voltage, I should be able to modulate it to whatever degree I want. Careful not to accidentally ground things. There you go. So that's just another VCA capability in the machine. So I think that's pretty much it. Let's see, the other thing I want to mention is that the uh, there's also a buffered input that you could use as a switch to switch that external, that secondary VCA from being the modulation input or just some other input you want to put in. So you could flip the switch to control those. There's also a mode where the crossfader, the way it's hooked here, um, the way it's switched here is um, it's crossfading between the original input and the rig mod output. Um, there's also a mode we can do where there's just some external input. So you can use the ring modulator on its own and use the crossfader as an entirely separate crossfade module. So let me flip some switches here by moving some wires around and demonstrate that for you now. Move things around so that the ring mod is now entirely separate from the crossfader. And using the offset, I can show you the two signals I have going in. One's a higher pitched square wave. The other is a sawtooth. And I can, let's put that in the middle there and then turn up the control voltage, influence. So now we're using a sine wave LFO to crossfade between the two. So here you can switch it and just use it as a entirely separate crossfader. Just randomly playing with the pitches there.